Russia is back, the Black Sea Grain Initiative. On October 29th of 2022, the Ukrainians staged an attack against the port of Sevastopol in the Crimea off the Black Sea. The Ukrainians used a combination of surface and aerial unmanned vehicles to attack elements of the Russian Black Sea fleet. The result of that attack was Russia announced it was withdrawing from the Black Sea Grain Initiative. This was an agreement that had been brokered back in July of 2022 that allowed Ukraine to start the export of grain from three ports along the Gulf of Odessa. Up to that point, Ukraine had only been able to get grain out either overland, by train, or by using smaller ports along the Danube River. But the vast majority of the grain that Ukraine typically exports was held in ports and in silos waiting to get out. Now, the Russians agreed to this for a variety of reasons, not the least of which they assumed that this would protect their food and fertilizer shipments coming out of the Sea of Azov through the inland waterway system of Russia, out through the Kerch Straits and the port of Novorysk. However, this new attack raises a level of concern for the Russians, and they temporarily withdrew from the Black Sea Grain Initiative, but now they're back in. So let's take a look at what exactly happened with this attack, why the Russians suspended their involvement, and potentially going forward for these grain shipments. If you're new to the channel, take a second, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's jump into this. So this story is in G Captain from Reuters. Russia pulls about face and re-enters the grain deal. Uh, Moscow announced the sudden reversal after Turkey and the United Nations helped keep Ukrainian grain flowing for several days without Russian participation in inspections. The Russian Defense Ministry justified the change by saying it had received guarantees from Kyiv not to use the Black Sea Grain Corridor for military operations against Russia. Kyiv did not immediately comment on that, but has denied in the past that it's used the agreed shipping corridor as covers for attack. So, initially there was a withdrawal from the initiative by, uh, by Russia. And there was a lot of belief that Russia was pulling back because of the attack in Sevastopol and the region. Now, we have no indication that the Russians have lost any ships. The Russians have only acknowledged damage to one minesweeper, although, as you'll see, there was probably more ships hit. But what came out was a clear belief by the Russians that the attack was potentially staged off one of these vessels, either in the grain convoy or masking another vessel that launches attack. And we'll break that down a little bit more for you exactly what this means. So the attack itself is, as characterized by the BBC, a massive drone attack on the Black Sea fleet. And one of the most interesting things they used were these vessels. These are basically glorified, modified kayaks to say nothing more. Uh, these vessels, this is one that washed up on the shore off of Russia about a week or two before the attack. Very small, limited range, but unmanned, uh, remotely controlled, and packed with explosives, powered by, by a jet ski motor, a commercial jet ski motor. This is completely off the shelf type technology that's being used in these vessels. This video from The Guardian gives you a better image here of the attack. So this is seen from one of those vessels. You'll see a Russian hip helicopter there in the air. The splashes you're seeing there is machine gun fire coming from the helicopter as they're trying to stop it. The vessel in the distance is the uh, believed to be the Admiral Markov. It is a frigate, the flagship of the Russian Black Sea fleet. You'll see them coming in. There's a huge amount of machine gun fire. And one of the things you'll see is a thermal image here of the vessel. And you'll see it right there. You can see the heat plume coming from the, uh, the stack of the vessel. You can see how close they're getting to the vessel at this point. Obviously, this vessel has to come in contact to set those fuses off on the bow. It's not clear if the Admiral Markov was hit. But based on this video, it appears to have gotten pretty close to it. Uh, Again, these are the Guardian with these comments coming in here. You can see the vessels literally coming in. That was the minesweeper that is believed to be hit. You'll see the image here of explosions in the harbor in Sevastopol. Now, these unmanned surface vehicles, they're, they're small. They're not very large. So on any vessel you have, you have basically three major characteristics that trade off on the tonnage and the displacement of the vessel. So speed, fuel, and then cargo. 
And in a vessel like this, you have to trade off. So this is from H.I. Sutton's site, Covert Shores, a great site. If you don't follow him, Naval News is the website. But if you go over to Twitter, follow Covert Shores. It's fantastic. These vessels would have limited range. The more fuel you put into these vessels, the less warhead you have. So you're always trying to balance off those two issues. Uh, it's interesting that the vessel that is targeted here is a vessel called the Admiral Markov. Markov is is a, a unique figure in Russian history. He is a Russian admiral who was at Port Arthur in 1904. This was the site of the first kind of surprise attack launched by the Japanese against the Russians using a new technology called torpedoes. Uh, one of the very first successful torpedo attacks using unmanned, unguided weapon that were basically shot into the water. That's what basically torpedoes are. They're un underwater to uh, missiles. Uh, Markov leads his units out uh, in, in chase after them and will actually lose his life on board his flagship that is mined. So it, it's just a strange kind of parallel here. That's the name of the ship. This is that naval news site, and I'll have it in the, in the link for you so that you can take a look at this. Interesting. But what I want to bring up is this, and, and this is the main point here is where these vessels staged from and what this means. So the Russians initially believed that this attack was staged from one of the passing vessels that headed south out of the Gulf of Odessa, heading toward the Turkish Straits. And this is the reason they yanked their OK for the Black Sea Grain initiative. Well, they're back in now because they received assurances and they probably have checked their data that the attack was not launched from there. But the question is then, OK, where was the attack launched from and what does this mean going forward for the Black Sea Initiative? So this is the U.N. website for the Black Sea Grain Initiative. This is their Joint uh, Coordination Center. Great information. If you want to find out exactly what's going on, head over to this site. I'll have the link in the show notes for you. So like right here, what has been shipped? So you can get an idea of specifically how much cargo is gone. And what you see here is about 10 million tons of cargo have been shipped since this all started back in August. So a good chunk of cargo has basically gone. In terms of ship, where it's going, you can see where it's going. Now, this has been one of the contentions that Russia has had with the Ukraine shipments. One of the arguments for these shipments was, hey, this is food that has to get into the hands of poor, displaced, starving people in places like Africa and Asia. Yet, if you look at the top five nations that receive the grain that comes out of Ukraine, over 50% of it, it's going to five nations. It's going to Spain, it's going to Turkey, it's going to China, it's going to Italy, and it's going to the Netherlands. That's where it's going. You know, countries like Djibouti, which is the kind of the uh, entrance spot here for Ethiopia, is receiving almost nothing so far. And that's, that's a bit of a problem. They even on the UN site breaks down the ships so you can see what ships they are, when they sailed, where they sailed, what's the commodity, what's their destination. So you get a lot of data here. And the UN has been completely transparent in the number of ships and what's been hauling here. Remember, every ship that goes into Ukraine stops in Istanbul, is searched to make sure there's no weapons, no munitions. But again, the Russians were concerned that these ships were coming out of Ukraine, Ukraine excuse me, and potentially maybe towing or masking the launch of these underwater surface vessels. Russia's back into the grain shipments. The grain shipments are back on. We're getting ready to see shipments resume. We did on the 31st. We saw a big convoy come out. Over a dozen ships come out on the 31st. However, there was another story that came out that was really interesting. It was this story from the Maritime Executive. Russian forces strike two tugboats at Ochikiv. Uh, Ochikiv? I'm sorry, my Ukrainian is terrible. Leaving two dead. Two civilian tugboats were hit by Russian fire at the port of Ochkiv, Ukraine, on Monday, according to the Ukrainian Operational Command South. The Russian strikes are the first hits on civilian vessels reported since the signing of the Black Sea Grain Initiative in late July. Russia withdrew its security guarantees and participation initiative over the weekend, citing the drone boat attack on Sevastopol on Friday night. As a result of an attack on two port civilian tugboats that were involved in the transportation of grain barges... A fire broke out and control of the vessels were lost. Two crew members were killed. One more was rescued with injuries. The fate of another is unknown. So I have to tell you, I was really wondering about this. Why would the Russians escalate all of a sudden 
when uh, everything had been kind of ironed out now, they're back into the shipment, and now they're attacking civilian, even though they're Ukrainian, attacking civilian tugboats and barges. And then this story came out. This is from Financial Times. Military briefing, Ukraine raid heralds new era of naval drone warfare. And what you got out of that story was this map right here. And it shows that the Russians said Ukraine prepared the drone attack in the coastal town of Ochakiv, about 270 kilometers northwest of Sevastopol. How did they get the unmanned surface vehicles to Sevastopol? Now, initially, they thought they were in these convoys coming out of Odessa, sailing this way right here. And then they came, they peeled off and headed towards Sevastopol. But if it wasn't those, but they're using tugs and barges, which are operating all along the coast here, bringing grain from the interior into these ports. What if those tugs and barges are being used as either launch mother vehicles or masking the launch of these vessels? Again, these underwater surface vehicles don't have a long range, probably just based on their size and engines and fuel. So they have to get dropped off fairly close to the scene to be effective. And it looks like the Ukrainians are using tugboats and barges to mask the approach here. And that is probably one of the reasons why we saw for the first time, really in, in quite a few, few months now, the Russians attacking civilian vessels, these tugs and barges, and killing two, wounding one with one more missing. It is a interesting escalation in the conflict. Russia has to be worried about further attacks on their main base at Sevastopol. But the other concern they, they're going to have to really start thinking about here is obviously this is a long range for them to stage these levels of attacks. But the Ukrainians have been getting more and more brazen, attacking further and further out. The question the Russians are going to have to have is what about these anchorages here off the Kerch Strait, off the port of Novorisk, where there's a lot of vessels, including tankers, grain vessels, all loading and heading out toward the Black Sea, toward the Turkish Straits. They have to be concerned about attacks. And what about their vessels operating here, sailing through the Black Sea? Because a lot of these are Russian vessels. Remember, the ships carrying food and fertilizer are not sanctioned. There's no sanctions on Russian vessels carrying that. There are some sanctions being implemented against fuel, oil, gas, coming out of Russia with more to come into effect starting in December. And what if the Ukrainians start staging attacks further out into the Black Sea, targeting Russian vessels? Now, obviously, that will cause an immediate backlash. The Russians will probably withdraw again from the Black Sea Grain Initiative. But one of the things we saw was even though the Russians withdrew for a couple of days from the initiative, the convoys kept sailing. They didn't stop which has got to tell the Ukrainians that we can maybe attack these vessels and not have repercussions against the Black Sea grain coming out. It makes the Black Sea a much more dangerous area. Early on, I talked about the fact that there is a danger that the Black Sea could escalate into the Persian Gulf of the 1980s during the tanker wars. That is a dangerous potential. These could attack neutral vessels, you know, ships flagged in countries that don't have a Navy that can come protect them, Panama, Liberia, all of these places that basically don't have navies. A lot of the vessels you see coming in and out of there, Malta, a few others, are really these open registries. And what happens should these vessels become targeted with the Russians attacking Ukrainian grain vessels, the Ukrainians attacking Russian food and fertilizer and fuel vessels? Man, the Black Sea can turn into the wild, wild west if we're not careful. The other thing I'll mention here real quick is the use of this drone is not a change or a revolution in maritime affairs. We've seen drone attacks like this at sea. Uh, a few years ago, a Saudi frigate was hit in the Red Sea by a remote control boat. Uh, we've seen this level of attack. Uh, there were remote control basically missiles and boats used as far back as World War II, actually. But what makes this attack much different, I would say, is the scope and the scale and the potential this raises, because now the Russians have got to divert forces to block the harbors, 
put helicopters, put boats, put nets, put all this kind of infrastructure in. It diverts from the larger war effort. And I think that's what the Ukrainians are largely doing. What happens from here? Who knows? This is what war is all about. Once you let slip the dogs of war, it's very hard to put it back on the leashes. Or to quote my favorite military historian of all times, Ron Burgundy, it escalates quickly. And that's exactly what we're seeing happen right now in the Black Sea. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Hit that super thanks button down below and you can contribute directly to the page or head on over to Patreon, become a weekly, or, or excuse me, a monthly or yearly subscriber to Patreon, become a patron of the page. That allows me to keep these videos coming, keep you informed about global shipping directly. Until our next episode, this is Sal, signing off.